What is up guys, Flippin' Steve, back with another video. Thought I'd shoot a quick video on my way to work. Since I haven't seemed to be putting out much lately, I haven't live streamed in a while, I haven't live drived in a while. <clears throat> and today is Friday. And speaking of Friday, I got a really nice ice cube card in the mail this morning. I'm gonna post it on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, go ahead and check it out if you'd like to see the card. It'll eventually pop up in a video or a live stream. Don't know when, but if you want to see it now, check it out. Cool Ice Cube card, whether you like his music or his movies. It's posted on IG right now. Now, this video is something I talked about in my last video about putting out, and it's trading down. You know, in the card world, everybody, especially right now, is always talking about trade up, trade up, trade up, and, you know, get in the higher end cards uh, by their definition. And, uh, you know, that's great and that's dandy. But one thing that is left out is often when you trade up in the cards, especially if you're looking to resell, is that you lose a demographic of buyer. And what I mean by that is you push certain people out that can afford your cards, okay? And you want to have high diversity, whether it's across players, across sports, across markets, you know, whatever it is. It's also got to be across price point. And it's something that I don't think people talk about a lot is that if all you have is high-end cards, super expensive items, yes, you may move a card every now and then or a couple cards every now and then, and that's your big boom. That's your big boom, and that covers your expenses, especially if you're using this as your livelihood, which I am not. I'm not in that situation. But, you know, imagining myself in that situation. I would have to sell a big card, you know, per week to use it for whatever, my expenses, my bills, to eat, uh, my family, or whatever. And if you can't find that buyer that's got the money to buy that big card, then for that week, I mean, I guess you're just SOL, right? So, in my opinion, it also makes sense to have the lower end slabs. And all lower end stuff doesn't move. So, you know, I have to specify uh, lower end items with high liquidity people who don't like the liquidity world in the sports card market maybe you use it in a different manner well let's just say cards that are easier to move okay uh, popular players even if they're base cards can be bought and sold and when you look at sales volume on certain players when you look at guys like John Morant Zion Williamson uh, Luca uh, Joe Burrow Justin Herbert I mean these guys their base cards move. They sell, you know, regularly. More so than their higher end cards. More so than their patch autos. Uh, more so than their, their high end uh, or super rare one of ones and things. Because you don't have to find a specific buyer. Now, the market and the sale price point for these cards might be different <clears throat> at all times. It might fluctuate. Uh, for instance, one card that I'm going to talk about fluctuates anywhere between $250 and $350 on any given auction. <clears throat> so again, you're not going to um, necessarily know an exact price of what you might get for this item, but someone is going to buy it. So be be because you leave yourself a higher demographic and you leave yourself more people who can afford to buy said card. Um, so. But all that aside, I'll talk about an example of what I, um, uh, a deal I made recently, and this was a trade. <clears throat> I had a card for sale, and this was a Larry Bird Flawless On Card Auto <clears throat> BGS 8.5. Sorry, I keep clearing my throat. I acquired it at the National last year, the 2021 National in Chicago, <clears throat> for $400 in trade. I've been trying to sell that card recently since Atlanta for 500 bucks. I even had it in my showcase in Atlanta for 500 bucks. And I sold a lot of Larry Bird autographs in Atlanta, but some of them I could sell cheaper because I was a little bit less invested. I was selling them more around the 350 uh, to 400 range because they were raw. This one was graded. I wanted 500 for it because I was in, in, in on it at 400. So I acquired a really, really high end Larry Bird card for my collection. For my personal collection so i decided i would piece out some of my other larry birds <clears throat> that no longer held the relevance that they once held to me personally because now i had a higher end card so i put the larry bird up for sale 
I had someone reach out to me in a trade, and I said, of course, you know, I'll always take a look. You know, you never shut people down on their offers, their trade offers, because you may be able to get trade in cards that's just as good as cash. And that's what I mean by trading down into items that have a higher demographic of buyer, but are still very highly movable, even though, even though they're lower end cards. So this deal involved my Larry Bird going to uh, the other uh, the other gentleman in the deal, and I acquired uh, two base Joe Burrow Prism rookies. Yes, I said Prism base, one in a PSA 10, one in a PSA 9. I also acquired, I believe it was a 2009 Kobe Bryant refractor in a PSA 9. So I got those three cards for my Larry Bird, which I had valued at $500. I just dropped the Joe Burrow PSA 10 base prism off at the post office. It was sold for $300. So I'm gonna net, um, actually that was sold on my slab. So I'm gonna net more than I was gonna net on eBay. I'm gonna net probably around 285, 290 on that. So I'm looking to still get $200 out of the other two cards that I acquired in the deal. And that's a Kobe Refractor PSA 9 and a Joe Burrow Base PSA 9. <clears throat> I can now move that Joe Burrow Base for whatever price I want to move it for to get me closer to the $500 that I originally wanted for the Larry Bird. And in the end, I believe I'm probably going to end up making around $700 off this deal in cash as opposed to the $500 that I was originally asking for because I traded down and I was able to get more in value. And that's the key. When you trade down, you're going to pick up more cards to trade. You're going to acquire more work. You're going to acquire cards that aren't as good. And I understand, you guys might be like, why would you trade a Larry Bird Auto for those cards? And I understand that I was giving up the better card. I was giving up the better card, but I was getting cards that I knew I could move quickly and still get me what I was asking to get for the Larry Bird, if not more. And that's what you do. You trade down. You get more value because I easily got 600 to 650 in value for a card that I valued at 500 due to the fact that I was trading down. And I'm willing to take on the work of now moving three cards instead of one. But it's not difficult if you get cards, like I said, that are easily movable. And I did this on the drive. I kind of did this on the fly with no notes. It's all in my head. Um, but at the end of the day, I was happy with the deal. The other guy got the card that he really wanted, a nicer card to do whatever we, whatever he wants to do with it. Maybe he wants to mark it up and try to resell it. Maybe he wants to hold it. He pretty much got a safe card that'll never go down. And I got three cards that I'll move off quickly and actually get more money than I was gonna get and if I sold my original card. So that's all I wanted to hit on tonight, guys. Today is Friday. I'm headed to the Chantilly show after work. So I'll be there Friday night. Um, not at the show, <laughs> I'll be in Virginia Friday night and the show Saturday and Sunday. If this video gets uploaded by then and you're at the Chantilly show and you run into me, come up and say, come up to me and say, what's up? We'll talk, we'll chat. Maybe we'll make a deal, a trade, who knows? Um, and again, guys, just keep that in mind. When you trade up, you get great cards, but if you're looking to move those cards, you gotta find the buyer. And you don't have a market price, you have a perceived value. And sometimes those cards can be a little bit more difficult to move and if you're really looking to move stuff quick, widen your demographic by getting more affordable cards of players that are in demand, players that are in high demand. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Thanks for viewing. Hopefully you take something out of this, and a lot of you guys out there already know this, um, but hopefully this is helpful for, for some. All right, guys, take it easy. Enjoy your day. Check out some cards. Head over to Instagram. Look at that Ice Cube card that I got, guys. I'm buying weird stuff. You know how it is, and I'll talk to you guys later.